Okay. Compound inequalities. Now we got a microphone that's on. Good. Um, we've. How awkward does that look? Okay. Compound inequalities. Now, do you guys all agree that if we have a, uh, we'll just do, we'll do a. Do you guys all agree that if we had a is equal to b is equal to c, do you agree that a is equal to c? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But what if we had How would we find the value of B? How would we find the value of B? I don't know. How? Uh, we couldn't right now. Couldn't right now? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Now you're. I, I, I see what you guys are saying. We don't. We don't have to know what A is. Think algebraically and not arithmetic. Particularly. Okay? Because arithmetic is numbers, algebra includes variables. What do you think? Mm, no, we've got, we've got uh, remember, B, when we're, when we're solving for inequalities, our variables, our variables want to go away. And I'm asking you, how do we find B? Yeah? Add 6. Add 6, because we have to do the additive, uh, additive inverse. So it's plus 6 here, plus 6 here, plus 6 here. So we have a plus 6 is equal to b, which is equal to c plus 6. We wanted to solve for b, didn't we? That's Yes, because that's what I told you, that we wanted to solve for b. That was how I introduced it. Really? Because we have b equaling a plus 6. We also have b e being equal to c plus 6. I don't care about a and, a and c. I wanted to solve for b. We can solve for a if we wanted to. Sure we can. We wanted to solve for a. How do we get a by itself? So here, let's do this. Let's do this. Solve for b. Now let's solve for Hey, if we wanted to, we just subtract six here, subtract six here, subtract six here. A is equal to B plus six, or B plus. It's a variable. What's B? It's a variable. Okay, so let's let's insert. Uh, so b is negative 6, you say? Yes. Okay, so that makes 6 be uh, a be negative 12 and c be negative 12. What? 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 Watch. Watch. I'll show you. I'll show you. You're just confusing it. Yeah. Okay? We just entered. We just entered our own variable. We're making stuff up. Okay? So let b equal, you want negative 6, Stephen? Do you go by Steven no, or Steve? Let's use negative 7. Let, ooh, negative 7? Yeah. Whoa. Just Whoa. Negative 27. So let B equal negative 7. So A is equal to negative 7 minus 6, which is equal to C. So now... Going too fast? Yeah. Okay. Okay, stop. I mean, okay. Remember that whole thing of the conversation your brain have be staying. Yeah, thanks. Yes, goose. Right now, I'm 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 challenging Steve and saying, but how would we know what's what? So. Because this is just the introduction to what we're doing, okay? So now, yeah. 
just to get you curious. So there's a lot of excited curiosity here. So now I have negative 7 minus 6. Negative 7 minus 6, which is going to be negative 13, because if you want to do the additive inverse, it's like that. Remember the additive inverse to make it? Mm -hmm. So it would be A equals negative 13, which is equal to C. So that's that's how I did that. That's how I knew right away that it was negative 12, and you said let's make it negative 6. Yeah. Yep. If we wanted to solve for A, because we just solved for A and C. But the main idea behind what we're doing here is I'm showing you that you can have an equality on either side of an expression where we're trying to solve or evaluate. Yes? Yep, you could say like this. So that would be the final answer. Lun? Yeah. Well, we, what we did is we we eva we, eva we evaluated this expression up here on top by introducing what the variable is going to be. So we inserted that in. We substituted. Yes, sir. If we wanted to solve for B, we would just do the um, the one up here. So if we just if we didn't know what anything was, and we were told to solve for B, that would be that final answer. We only use six because that's what's messing with B. I like to say messing with because it's the one that's either being some sort of uh, expression, it's either or operation, it's either multiplication, division. Let's go on to a next one. You're, you're focusing a little bit too much about this generic, generic example. Okay? That's how I'm trying to introduce it. Yeah. Okay, B. So if we had a situation where... I told you that x is greater than or equal to, you know what, let's do this, x, someone give me, someone give me uh, an expression and a number less than 12, I guess, okay, yeah, 11, okay, so we have 11x is greater than, somebody give me, um, someone give me a number that's greater than 40. Actually, who's... Here we go. 43. So, now I'm saying, and 11x is less than or equal to, give me a number... That is greater than 43. Amel? 47. Do you see how this is the same 11x? This can be rewritten as 11x in the middle greater than 43. And look, remember I told you when you read it this way, it's 11x is less than or equal to 47. But if I read it the other way, it's 47 is greater than or equal to 11x. So I can put this over here. 47 is greater than or equal to 11x. Yes. No, it's not going to simplify because we just made those up. We created this problem. Okay. If we wanted to graph this, we would have to solve for x. What are we going to do to solve for x? Yeah. Divide by 11 because, and I'm going to rewrite it so in your notes it's rewritten. 
Yeah, if I'm writing it, you're writing it. One of my class periods got in a lot of trouble because a lot of kids weren't. Divided by 11, divided by 11, divided by 11. Because the division property of inequality says if you do to one side, you do to the other. Now, you might be, you might be stressing right now, but keep in mind that you're just seeing it when you look back at your notes and when we see a solution. This is going to be harder than the homework, though. Homework is going to be easier than this. So, 47, what, 47 divided by 11? What's that going to be? It's going to be 4, oops, 11, 44, 3. So, we got 4 and 3 elevenths. Um, since we made this up, it's not going to be pretty. So, it's 4 elevenths. Yeah, they're all going to be. Uh, yes, every one of your homework answers are whole numbers. So it's going to be 3. Come on, get out of there. 33. So that's going to be 10. So this one's 3 and 10 elevenths. 3 and 10 elevenths. And I'm running out of time. Does I say 44? Okay. Now let's graph this. Let's graph this. I'm going to put the number that is the biggest on the far right for this. So I'm going to go. Four and three elevenths. And then over here, I'm doing three and ten elevenths. Three, four, four and one eleventh, four and two elevenths. You eighth graders are so misbehaved. Now to graph this, is this going to be a closed in circle or an open circle from last uh, homework two nights ago? Open because it's, no, it's closed. No. Because it's greater than or equal to. No, it's greater than or equal to. Then I'm going to make that line thicker. So I've, you can barely see it, but it's green there. So that's how you would graph this one. Yeah, every single one's a graph. Sound like you guys just jumped out of an airplane and you didn't go as far as you thought. It's like I'm jumping out. We haven't taken off yet. Actually, that's not mine. That's not that's not breakable, is it, Goose? Good. We're gonna do number one together. We're gonna do number one together. So don't. We have just enough time to do that. Yeah. Is that three, three minutes? Yeah. You're welcome. All right, people, let's do number one together. I say you be quiet so we can do this. Now we have something. Shh, we have something happening to our variable here. It just so happens to be that k is being added to it, and k wants to be alone. It's like leave me alone. So what we have to do is we have to do the inverse, and the opposite of adding is subtracting. So I need to subtract six from both sides. So I have a negative two is less than k, which is less than 2. 
These are not equality or um, lefts that are equal to, so we have to have an open circle. I'm going to go with 2. I'm going to go to negative 2. And which way do my arrows go? Towards each other, yes. Toward each other. That's correct. It goes toward each other because it's saying, okay, K is going to be somewhere around here. Anything in there that you put will work. For example, if I put 0 in for K, so I'm going to test this point. Yeah, so I got a minute and a half. I'm going to test this point here, so I'm going to do 0. Is it true that 0 is less than, or it's negative 2 is less than 0, and 0 is less than 2? Yes. That's just rewriting. That's just rewriting. I'll do that one too. Oops. I'm gonna do this one right now so you guys can see it online. Okay? I'll take a I'll take a snapshot of it and put it on the notes page that I'll put online as well. Negative 10k is negative 90. Since I'm going to be dividing by a negative, that means that this needs to flip. Flip. So I have k is greater than 9. So that's one of them. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go to 9. Open circle. And it goes this way. Then I have negative 7k is greater than or equal to negative 14. Negative 7. Negative 7. Because it is divided by a negative, that means I have to flip my sign. Oops. That would be a positive 2. Oh, well, I'm not using that program. That would mean it would be a positive 2. Circle that guy. And K is less than or equal to 2. So it's less than or equal to, so that means that fills in, and it's over there. the 8th graders are watching 9-11 video. <laughs> <laughs>